girl's been murdered. Mr. Harrison's daughter is missing. And now at the house where she lives, the other girls are getting obscene phone calls. Yeah, what I've done is I've tapped this phone so that when it rings, it'll ring at the station house, too. There was a little girl murdered over in the park tonight. Yes, I heard. Your phone's ringing. Terminal 55. Remember those idyllic scenes out of your childhood? Crisp winter nights, star bright, sleigh bells, crackling yule logs, candlelight glistening off of shimmering Christmas trees, chestnuts roasting over open fires, carolers beneath snow-covered window ledges. Remember those. Remember them well. After Black Christmas, they'll never be the same again. Black Christmas, starring Olivia Hussey, Keir Dulay, Margot Kidder, and starring John Saxon as Lieutenant Fuller. If this movie doesn't make your skin crawl, it's on too tight. Okay, so usually at the end of our episodes, often, we didn't do it last month, but we sign off with Death to All Traitors. And that comes from our very first episode, and only the most hardcore Movie Humper viewers and listeners know, know, know that. this. Yeah. <laughs> it came from the movie, The Story of the Kelly Gang, The Incomplete 1906, considered by many the first true feature film. Yes, and there is this glorious moment where the Kelly Gang's sister is on this horse and she's it's it's a fantastic moment and it's silent movie so like under her it just says death to all traitors you, and you, i fucking love her she is a feminist that is a feminist <clears throat> movie 
You call it a moment. It's literally a stilled image with the care. word death to all traitors under Listen, it. Because movie, the movie was incomplete and they couldn't find the In a movie that has so scene. many missing bits. Yeah. It was the best bit. So for most of the movies, at, after that, we would sign off the episodes. Over 100 episodes. You would say death to all traitors. Yes. And the image of it would be over, like, an actor's head or something at the end. And a lot of people maybe was like, oh, my God, do you want this person to die or something? No, 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 no. Well, we'll take it on a person-by-person basis. But well, for the most part, sure. no. Right. No, it, for the most In part. In general, for, we are not trying to kill anybody. For the most part, it meant absolutely nothing. Unless yeah, well, we want it to mean something, and then it did. Yes. Well, it's kind of like a, it's not really, like, actual death. It's like, fuck the haters. Yeah. It's like, Which if you don't pretty... want to be here, get the fuck out. But we need to come up with a new Goodbye. slogan for yes. a new sign-off. We can and practice I, them I this don't, month. I don't want to continue with life to all lovers, because for some reason, that is hard for me to say. I always want to say, only lovers left alive, which is a movie title. Yeah. No, that's even worse. But yeah. And that movie's not even very good. But no. <laughs> But next year is going to be a shit year. It's already like the 2020 is not great. Let's be no, honest. Yeah. Hell, going into the end of 2023, 20, not great. Like you can't, you can't even be like, um, I'm, I think what's happening in Gaza is a, a genocide. Uh, it's an ethnic cleansing. People have literally lost their jobs for saying that. Oh, the girl who's in Scream 7. Okay. Uh, the lead, not Jenna Ortega. Oh, yeah, yeah. She literally was at a rally and yeah. called what was happening in Gaza a genocide by the Israeli government. Yeah. They cut her from Scream, uh, what, seven? Eight? No, it would be s- eight, yes. They cut her from the franchise. Uh, Spyglass fired her for claiming false genocide. Well, a lot of people are not uh, happy about that. And even at this point, even if they hire her back on, like, I would not go back. No, we're not going. Goodbye. We're not going to give you any more money. Yeah, no. Spyglass. We would have gone to that movie. Guess what? Probably. We're not. And we're not going to fucking talk about it. Well, you know, where. Death to Spyglass. For now. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Death to Spy. (laughs) No, no. Uh, Is that uh, a company? Just boycott. Is Uh, that the company? Yeah, this is the company that helped make the. He said Death to (laughs) Spyglass. Okay, <laughs> we're not saying go and kill the producers and s- no, studio I just executives and spy we glass. Just explain it doesn't mean actual death. It is some bullshit. It's right? like goodbye. Yeah. We're done with you. Well, at least we'll 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 see what comes out <laughs> on the other side of this. But this is true. Yeah. So like you. God. So that's the that. But that's just the climate we're in now, where we see some obvious bullshit, and you say it, and people will be like. Literally murdering people by the tens of thousands, yeah. and they'll be like, "You're an anti- you're anti-Semitic, you're uh, <laughs> or uh, no, you love Donald Trump because you're criticizing mm. the Biden administration blank checking." Look, and this is just getting started, so that just, just goes me- to show how shitty next year is going to be. And on top of that, next year, twelve times a year, at some point. It's the year of Von Trier. We're showing a Lars Von Trier movie almost <laughs> once a month. We as sure it, are. As if it couldn't get dreary enough, next year is the year of Von Trier. And there's no better year for Von Trier. Is it going to be our... Is, are we going to do one of his on, like, New Year's Day? Are we starting the year with Von Trier? No. Okay. He'll be at the... He'll be at the... <laughs> end? He'll be at the end of the month. Unless you want to start. <laughs> I didn't know how hard we were going. <laughs> It's going to be hard no matter what day it is. <laughs> I know. Uh, we should talk about the movie. That's a good idea. Black Christmas from 1974. <laughs> we talked about White Christmas last Monday. Yeah. Fast so now forward we're going Black Christmas. From 1954, fast forward 20 years, Black Christmas by Bob Clark. This Christmas slasher, kind of a one of the earliest pure slashers. I think, uh, you know, what's the, the first real slasher is probably like... Um, like Psycho or something, right? Probably. I would say so. What about M? Is that a... That's like maybe a proto-slasher. I read that this movie and the the slasher murderer mystery man, Billy, 
is Billy. Like, <laughs> That's my impression. <laughs> expanded his act could that be one person no claire that's the mormon tabernacle choir doing their annual obscene phone call <laughs> go ahead but he's like this movie and that character is credited as being sort of the start of the whole jason michael myers like he, this was yeah, before yeah. all of that this like faceless unexplained like why in the fuck is this guy even doing this kind of murder i think michael myers was kind of the first in the sense of like having something that you could kind of market like the image of the killer. yeah i mean this is not marketable but, all you see are but, his eyeballs but billy is extremely vague and our trailer playing above our head is like in slow motion for some reason Read off the cast list for this shit. This is a good movie. Uh, well, it's written by A. Roy Moore, and it stars Olivia Hussey, who was in that, uh, who was Juliet in that Andrea, what's that fucker's name? Whatever. The one we and all watched in school. R- Romeo and Juliet one. Yeah. With the titties. Yeah. And uh, Margot Kidder. <laughs> Margot Kidder. Cared to lay, uh, John Saxon, the, the prolific John Saxon, plays the uh, sheriff or detective or whatever he's like the main detective and he's kind of sassy and fucking andrea martin who would go on to sctv andrea martin i was like she's kind of a hottie i got she's real a, excited she's kind about, of a dime in this movie i know i got real excited about margot kidder and then i didn't even like see her andrea martin's name at the beginning like, i didn't notice it as soon as i saw her face i got so excited like i love her did you know um, that originally Gilda Radner was picked to play that role and she got, she had to go do something else. Wow. And, um, yeah, so they got, I can see that too. They got Andrea Martin. Pretty, pretty cool. Every one of these college students were 37 years old. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they were probably around late 20s, early 30s in real life. But, you know, this movie is very simple. It's a slasher movie that takes place mostly within the sorority house. Yes. It's not going to take us long to go through it. We're not going to go bit by bit. No. But I think we can talk about the actors and how they do and this 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 Billy character. It really won't take long at no. all. But Margot Kidder is straight up like, she kind of plays this like very... She plays someone that doesn't really care about their status. Almost like a spoiled person. Who isn't concerned about actually failing she in life? She definitely comes from money. Uh, yeah, she yeah. definitely thinks she's better than everybody. She thinks she's she's a drunk. She's also pissed at her mom because her mom was supposed to take her skiing for Christmas and has called her to say she's going off with her her new boyfriend. And yeah. Margot Kidder literally on the phone calls her mom a gold plated whore. <laughs> Apparently, they did a rewrite and like turned that character up just to kind of make it, in their words, not as plain a movie. She gets a child drunk in front of people, like literally just plies a kid in front with of booze. Parents. Yeah, yeah. This His pa- mom was probably in that room. This parent who's been looking for their daughter, who'd been suff- oh yeah, she's sitting right next to who'd been suffocated in the attic because. We don't know, like, they don't know this, but there's someone in the attic. Like There is a dead person in the attic from the beginning of this movie. Pretty much. Until it's over. And still, maybe. Yeah, right? That girl is still in the attic. They were. They did not look thoroughly throughout this house. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> because, okay, the, um, we'll get there when we get there. Look, Margot Kidder. I want to talk about. Dumb. I want to talk about Margot Kidder a little yes, more. Yes, let's talk about her some more. She is like on one in this. You know, I almost, you know, you read Margot Kidder interviews. And it doesn't seem like she's much different than the character. Like Lois Lane, she's sassy. Maybe a little bit more like. More like a cleaned up version of what Margot is, but I feel like the real Margot is somewhere under there, and you can tell it's under there. I think the real Margot is somewhere between this lady and Lois Lane in yeah. terms, but still got that straight up like foul mouth sass. She cleaned it up for Lois, and she turned it up for Barb. Yeah, like they're, at one point they're talking about like like there's something going on where women are getting raped and murdered in town, and she literally goes, "Darling, you can't rape a townie." really are too much barb it's terrible i read an interview um an av club interview she did in 2009 where she was talking about how 
Olivia Hussey was trying to do something to like she felt like she was cosmically meant to be with Paul McCartney <laughs> and that Paul McCartney would come into her life. And be her husband or boyfriend. Oh my god! And apparently, her and some of the other, maybe Andrea Martin, I don't know, would like they te- they kind of tease the fuck so out. So would I. Margot Kidder probably bullied the shit out Every of Olivia Every time her Hussey phone rings, it's like, oh, the do you set think it's of this Paul? movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they probably had someone on staff like pretend to oh be my Paul god. and call her, "Hello, Olivia. 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 <laughs> I need. I want you to be on. I'm sick of Linda. I'm sick of her shit." Uh, She's gone. I'm meant to be with you, Olivia. Like, Paul is literally with the love of his life at this time. And Olivia Hussey's like, he's going to be with me. Also, also in that interview, Margot Kidder was talking about a movie she made with Burt Lancaster, like in the 80s, and how she didn't get along with him and literally punched him in the back and called him like a homophobic slur. Which, admittedly, when I read, uh, was very funny. To, to, well, just to think to about read. her doing that. <laughs> it was hilarious. Because she didn't give a fuck. She still doesn't. She Well, she's definitely doesn't now. She's dead. I will say, but she, she, well. So she is certainly not giving any fucks right now. I mean, she never gave a fuck. She sure didn't. Uh, everyone in this movie, though, I mean, her the most. She's the most turned up in this movie as far as, like, brash over the top. But everyone is to a point, like, even Olivia Hussey, like, she's the one who's, like, it's weird because this person's calling and moaning. They call him the moaner on the phone. And then it it progresses to where he's been saying things and doing voices. But for some reason, (laughs) she takes it upon herself as, like, the one being called, right? And even the cops act that way. So she answers the phone and she's, Hello? Who is it? Why are you doing this? Like, everything is 10. But Margo, when she picks up the phone, she fucking loves it. And she clowns the dude. Oh, and yeah. The, and at the end of one of her, like, she's trying to chide the guy, insult his manhood. Go find a wall sock and stick your tongue in it. That'll give you a charge. I'll stick my tongue up your pretty pussy. You fucking creep. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Like his regular voice. They and don't. She makes fun of the goody goody girl, and she goes up to her room and immediately is murdered. Yeah, yeah. Well, the goody goody girl. And she is. is the one in the attic. And the taken whole movie. up into the attic, and it's established early on that there's two lines in the house, and one is used by like the den mother who comes in. Yeah, and the house take mother. She has her own phone line. So that's established, like, so we know automatically. Oh, that's, that's... the line the killer's using because this is all based upon. Like some some murders around Montreal during Christmas time, mm-hmm. which was an inter like within a family murder. It was it was a son who killed his whole family. I think he was like fourteen. And then the and then the urban legend about the babysitter. The call is coming. The calls from are coming from inside the house. the house. I got so excited when I realized that someone would say that line at some point. Well, yeah, they kind of said it. They, they- kind of said it. They didn't exactly say it. So there's a side drama as well where um, Olivia Hussey is dating this guy is played by Care Delea. Who was who's, like 40. Who's supposed to be like, uh, the, and the whole movie is a misdirect has you thinking that he's the killer. Because he's a little unstable. He's like an artist. He's supposed to play this he's, big, huge, important piano recital. And like ho- he sucks it up real bad. him right the the afternoon of his recital right before his recital he's been practicing non-stop for four days not sleeping so he's like on the edge already it, he doesn't <laughs> seem he doesn't seem like a good dude like he does seem like no, he's, he's got some asshole. shit he needs to work out but she does go in that moment knowing everything about him and tells him that she is not only pregnant but going to have an abortion and he doesn't want her to do that now listen she was like i wasn't even gonna tell you maybe she shouldn't have because I, then he's I, like I, no like i want you to have the baby with that. like if you want to stay with this guy then you should tell him because then you can like handle it together but if this is not like a relationship you're staying in which we find out she ends up 
Telling him she doesn't want to stay with him. I would recommend if you're not going to be with him and he's going to be, and you think he's going to be volatile, don't tell him. That's what I'm saying. Don't just go have the abortion. That's what I'm saying. But like, if if he's like a if he's like a good person and you're in a good relationship and you want to stay with him, you you should tell. You should go through it together. Have someone support you. But you don't have to. And she can do whatever the fuck she wants. And he is upset because he's like, I want you to have this baby and I want us to get married and. But he doesn't say that until he fucking bombs his recital. Well, this might be controversial. I think she should be forced to have that baby. Ah! I'm kidding. I was going to say, no, you don't. (laughs) That's my little joke where I pretend to be ultra (laughs) pro-life. People love that character. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Do the ultra pro-life character, Bob. We love it. They tell me that at parties. It's great. I'm like, all 10-year-olds should have their rape babies. Oh, my God. Just don't even. I can't believe you said that. I know you're joking, but it's not jokey. It's satire, right? Now I'm depressed. I'm fucking Jonathan Swift over here. Jonathan Swift? Yeah. You're not the- very not very into literature, are you? Embarrassing. Can I tell you what I thought of when you said that? Jonathan Siegel? <laughs> yeah, you would think that. If only you were more literary minded like me. Okay. If only you were as learned. <laughs> this is my character, the snob, the literary snob. Uh-huh. Anyway, Black Christmas. <sighs> we kind of went through it all. The killer is in the house. Of. The killer's in the house, and so he keeps calling. <laughs> He keeps killing people. Um, Barb is drunk upstairs. Andrea Martin is in the house. Yeah. Um, Olivia has told the guy and he's like wrecked the piano at the school and he's kind of missing. He tries to come talk to her and she breaks up with him. The Din Mother gets murdered and dragged in the attic as well. The thing that's so weird is so like the goody goody girl at the beginning, her dad ends up hanging around. You mentioned him. He's the one hanging around because he was supposed to pick her up to take her home. He's the one that motivates everyone to keep looking into this, essentially. Yes. He, yes. He's the reason every, people aren't like, well, I guess and she's off. And her boyfriend. And her boyfriend yeah, yeah. also kind of comes in and, and and like kind of is like, why is no one looking into this? Yeah. He also knows the detective, which I think helps. I think it's his brother, maybe. I don't know. But, so the dad's there. The, the den mother, they don't figure out for a long time or they never figure out because she's also in the attic because she's supposed to go to her sisters. So they just assume she went to her sisters. So she's dead in the attic and so is this little girl. Up in not little girl, but goody goody girl. Yeah, yeah. We don't know her name. And they're up there and Billy is just like creeping around the house and he's going in and out of one of those really fucking scary attic holes where it's like a ladder and it's just like a little box. Yeah, it yeah. lifts up. It's so fucking creepy. We had one of those in the house we lived in once, and I hated it. The shots, uh, a reg- when they deal with Billy, like, you'll see a shot right over your head here on the YouTube feed of, you see the shadow of, of, of a man, of a man of the time, and, but you see the light is only, like, exposing, like, one yeah, eye. Yeah, it's creepy. It's really good. The shots are really good in this movie. The shots are really good. The misdirects are really good, too, because there is one time where you do actually really see the outline of his body. And in that moment, it could be the boyfriend. It does. But be, you don't see him well enough to Because he's got that kind of semi-long hairstyle that's very common at the time. Yeah. And it's just... It, so anyway, yeah, he slowly is like killing everyone. They think Barb's just asleep in her room, but he kills her at some point too. He kills Andrea Martin. He's killing everyone. Oh, in between all this, um, Olivia calls the detective. She calls the police station. There's a really fucking annoying officer that works at the front desk. Oh, he's just dumb. He's just dumb and stupid. But the detective is like, we're going to tap your phone. So they go in, and this is the dumbest thing ever. They go in and they're like, okay, we're going to tap these two phones on this one line. And then they go, oh, there's another line that is in the den mother. And they go, oh, don't worry about that one. That's not where the calls are are happening. No one's calling that number. Well, duh. 
Because they're calling from, from the number. number. The coolest thing to me, and I just really wanted someone to explain it, and I'm sure I could look this up to understand it, but the phone company man taps the phones, and this is the 70s, so then every time the phone rings, the detective can pick it up and listen to what's happening, but also the phone man starts running around at the phone company, yeah, like yeah. touching things and looking at things to try to see where the number's coming we from. We really have no idea what he's doing, but it seems dramatic. It's and- very dramatic. And look, <laughs> he does a great job because there's somehow it looks like it could be a boring thing, but it's intense. Yeah, they do a like, good job. He's like, I got to figure this because out. Because the guy's got to stay online when he's groaning and being like, I'm Billy. Oh, also, the other redirect, he does keep saying Billy. But at one point, yes. He's just a silly Billy. At at one point, he says to her on the phone, verbatim, what her boyfriend said to her about don't kill the baby. And there's and that's when the detective is like, It's your boyfriend, I know it's your boyfriend. But it's because Billy fucking heard it. Because yeah. he was he was in the back. You could see the shadow of him in certain moments. It was so creepy the way they did that, mm-hmm. where you would just know he was there, but you couldn't actually see him at all. The killer, Billy, stabs a drunk pass out Margot Kidder with a unicorn statue. Oh, that was fucked. As soon as I saw that unicorn head, I went, No, 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 no. <laughs> It was so brutal. It was so, ugh. But near the end, they they are able to keep him on the line long enough. And then that's when we get the, you got to walk out. He's in the house. And they tell her that. But she has to go back and check on her friends who are all dead. Agnes, it's me, Billy. Agnes, don't you tell what we did, Agnes. So she sees Margot Kidder and Andrea Martin like bloodied and piled on top of each other. They the cops have been there. They had never checked the attic. Oh. And even after the fact, they have not checked the attic. But but yeah, she uh manages to hide out in the basement and it just so happens that her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend somehow walks up on the window to the basement and at he, the exact moment she's running And he the breaks murder. through the window. Why? Like he breaks he out the window. He doesn't even know he sees her, but that's so it just creepy. it makes him look like he's desperate to get to her. Yeah, and then we get the police coming on. They finally arrive, and she they killed him. Yeah, they walk up to him, and he's like bludgeoned to death because she got scared in her lap, and she's like half passed out. Yeah, and they're like, "Well, she killed the killer." That's they, it. okay. And then this next scene infuriated me. So she killed him. They're like, "Oh, it was him. He's the killer. We thought he was the killer all along." And so, case closed, right? Then, they put her to bed in her room in the sorority house. They don't take her to the goddamn (laughs) hospital. They just put her in the bed. And then they're like, oh, we're going to sit with her for a few hours. They gave her, like, some fucking knock-you-out meds, right? And they're like, she's not going to be good for, like, four hours. And then we can, you know, maybe ask her some questions. We won't leave her, though. We're not going to leave her. Well, then, everyone leaves. And uh, we pan to the the attic and the bodies are still there they never check the there attic there were policemen all around this fucking house but they just said oh it's him case closed He's, goodbye he incompetent even, he even has his first victim propped up against the window That's it pans geez. back that that image is so fucking scary and amazing you can see her from the road if you just look up so yeah, Billy is still there. That her boyfriend was not Billy. Billy is still a mystery. The most- and he's not arrested, so he'll probably finish off the sorority house. And I just want to say for the record that if you've seen the remake of this movie, just know that they give him a backstory and that is all bullshit. So because it, they, because of the way people want to tie things up in a bow right? So in the remake, they create this whole backstory and tell you the why and the who he is. 
it doesn't fucking matter. And that's not, that was never the intention. The, Billy is really, scary because you don't know why. There is exactly. no reason. That's you the don't best know part who this, he is. He could be anyone. The same reason why at the end of Halloween, it ends on Michael Myers. Gone. Gone. Because now what the Because fuck? that signifies that he's just not just any man in a mask. This is different. <sighs> and, you know, and Billy not being discovered yet. The incompetence of the police, for one, but uh, well, but yeah, it adds the, the the lingering terror, the fact that the problem is not solved and it will continue. Well, and I bring that up too because I was reading about it, and the director, you know, this is how he made the movie. This is the ending he wanted, and then the production company and whoever was like, "Oh no, we need to like of course. wrap it up. Of we course, need to like catch yeah. him. We need to see his face." And he, they, they actually tested it both ways and like proved that it was a much better movie without knowing. And he won that argument, but they did like a small test case with people, if I'm remembering correctly. But he, he had to really fight because everyone wants like a hat, like even if it's, I say happy ending, but they want a closure. I want to know what the other ending is just to hear what they offer to come to offer it. Like if it's not the boyfriend, who are they claiming it is? Even. Like, what did they present to that test group? I know it wouldn't be satisfying, but I am just curious. I want to say it was something like maybe they just caught him or something. Like, it's but just a dude. I think so. But I know in the remake, they gave they did like a whole backstory scenes of his childhood. I mean, like, I, it, 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 and I don't want to ever see that because it doesn't matter. You got to remake something that was that... A, that inspired a bunch of things, but you the remake is just as generic as everything that a lot of what came after it. Not a good idea, but it's you know, insane. But yeah, Black Christmas by Bob Clark. I thought it was pretty damn good overall. A solid slasher. Uh, that's two uh, Friday December slashers in a row here. Yeah, um, I would. The, there won't be any more slashers, but things still might get a little dark uh, for the rest of December. Um, outside of our classic picks. But you're going to give this one through five. I'm going to give it one through five. Combine for best out yeah. of ten. I've been going first. I'm going to let you go first this okay. time. I really thought that was this was fun. It wasn't like super great, but as far as like slasher movies go, this does feel like it's exactly the kind of movie that I want to see. It It falls into that whole, like we already mentioned, Halloween, Michael Myers, Jason, like, mysterious, whatever. But I also really did love those, like, ridiculous moments. But there's definitely some overacting. There's, like, some weird, crazy shit. But I'm going to give it a 3.5. Um, I'm going to match that. Yeah. Which we are always matching. <laughs> but I think with certain types of movies, we just look for the same things. And I think with this one, yeah. it is... Yeah, this is a, definitely a seven for sure. We also didn't even mention it, but last month, like as of last month, we've been together for 19 years. So like we just like know each other yeah. a little bit. And I feel like not that we are the same because we definitely disagree on some things, but we do tend to have similar feelings on most movies. Right there joins the rankings of Forrest Gump, Halloween 3. The Naked Gun. Yes! Batman Returns. Barbie. Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. That That's how good Black I, Christmas is. It matches those types of I movies. I still don't think that um, Naked Gun should have gotten that high of a score. But I agree with the rest of it. bad mouthing this fucking movie? That's one we disagree on. Well, I guess there you go then. <laughs> I swear to God, if you uh, talk shit about the naked gun one more time. What are you going to do? I'm sticking it in the S tiers. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay, I love it. It's fine. Leave you don't it. have to love it. You just have I to love let it its go. I score. You have to let it go. I let it go. Let it go. All right. Check the show. That'd be for a good sign off. Go ahead. Let it go. <laughs> That's not bad. What did you say earlier? Fuck the haters. Fuck the haters. We might need it more positive, but that one's pretty good too. Yeah. Oh, but we're going to find out what you're going to say. Oh, yeah. I thought of one earlier that I was going to say. So check the show notes with links and other places to find us. We're going to keep it Christmas all month long. Do you like this movie? What do you think of Black Christmas? Um, like, subscribe. Leave a comment telling us what you think about anything. Fun facts. Criticisms. 
corrections. I ain't afraid of them. Bring them on. Dance like nobody's watching. (laughs) 